Okay, all right. Um, well, again, let's go back to Kant and let's think about the difference between intuition and concepts. Um, a difference which really um, is an, an updated version of a very old distinction between, if you like, the singular and the universal. So intuitions are, are always singular for Kant. They are intuitions of, of this or this or this. And concepts are more generic. Um, now, between the two, Kant places imagination. Um, imagination is that faculty of retaining what's no longer present. Uh, present. And, and of course, Kant, uh, as, as you know, thinks that some element of imagination is involved in all perception. Okay, now Hegel really takes over uh, that same threefold distinction, intuition, what he calls Vorstellung, which is basically what's translated as picture thinking, and then concept. And uh, he also talks about language more than, uh, than Kant does. But nonetheless, he keeps that basic Kantian uh, uh, um, threefold division. Um, so what is picture thinking? Well, it's, pic it's thinking that operates with Vorstellung. Now, Vorstellung, Vorstellung is often translated as representation. It's probably better translated as presentation. Although, oddly enough, <laughs> representation has an element of truth to it because it's a, a foreshadowing is not present in the way that an intuition is you know the books in front of you this computer here i can intuit them i see them i feel them i hear them they're there foreshadowing are always interiorized they're at one remove from being present so they're set before foreshadowing is just to set before they're set before the mind they have um and intuited that's a sensuous either content or form and they represent a sort of a transitional stage between intuition and concepts and hegel thinks they are what most of us do most of our thinking with i mean we also exercise understanding but we do a lot of our thinking in everyday life poetry works within the realm of vorstellung stroke imagination religion does um, our metaphors with which we sort of pepper our language, all that's Vorstellung. Um, okay, so I said they can have either sensuous, a sensuous form or content. A sensuous content is fairly easy to understand. I mean, in a way, just, you know, think of the tree outside your window, close your, uh, close your eyes and, and sort of picture it in your mind. That's already an example of Vorstellung. But, Hegel, but I think what's more interesting for philosophy for Hegel is the fact that Vorstellung can have a, like a sensuous form. So what gives them their form? Well, the form of being individuated, the form of being, as it were, almost sort of separated off from something else. So Vorstellungen, Hegel says, are connected really by the word and. There's God and God's omniscience and God's omnipotence and eternity, and there are finite things, and there's creation. That is a typical way of um, thinking in terms of Vorstellung. I think it was Wittgenstein, but I may have got this wrong, who says it's a thinking that just talks of one bloody thing after another, basically. That's Vorstellung. So what does it lack compared to understanding and then speculative uh, 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 reason? Well, compared to understanding, it lacks necessity. It lacks the idea of necessary connection. So, so Vorstellung doesn't really have a strong sense of necessary interconnectedness. And compared to Hegel's, you know, speculative thinking, he doesn't have a dialectical moment. Concepts don't turn into their opposites. They don't um, dynamically transform themselves. Um, so I suppose that's what picture thinking would be. Um, so an example of that, I mean, I suppose the easiest example to think of is the difference between philosophy and religion as Hegel conceives it. You know, Hegel thinks that uh, philosophy, uh, speculative philosophy and religion, principally Protestant Christianity, share the same content. They both tell the same story about the world. Philosophy says reason, the idea, uh, becomes incarnate in nature and human beings and comes to self-consciousness, becomes spirit in and through human beings. Hegel thinks Christianity tells us the same story. It just talks about God 
creating a world, becoming incarnate and becoming, you know, resurrected as Holy Spirit. But Hegel thinks that the same content is being presented in two different forms. The form of philosophy is that of concepts. The form of religion is not exclusively, but largely to do with Vorstellung. And so, whereas philosophy will talk about the idea, religion will talk about God the Father. Whereas philosophy will talk about, uh, and, and I have to say, it's not the clearest bit of Hegel, but about the way in which the idea discloses itself to be nature, religion will talk about God the Father creating nature. Creation then being, as it were, a metaphor, an image for the process that that philosophy describes. Um, and also religion tells the story of the idea of becoming spirit as a story, as a narrative. Yeah. As a narrative that's both poetically structured and historically structured. So that all belongs to Vorstellung. Um, so I say, I would say that the, if you think of it in terms of Vorstellung and picture thinking operates with either internalized images drawn from sensuous experience or um, ideas drawn from thought, but given a sort of an isolated status. So they're connected through the and, or they're connected just in terms of this happens and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens. Hmm. That's basically picture thinking. And Hegel's not trying to eliminate it. He's not trying to eliminate it. He just doesn't think it's appropriate for philosophy but i mean and this is contentious i guess but my view is hegel thinks that you know human beings cannot live by concepts alone they need intuitions they need imagination they need bodily experience they need lots of things to be and they need to experience the truth through all of these so that's why art and religion for example are crucial for hegel and and so knowing the truth through picture thinking is important it's just not what philosophy does Although, of course, famously, Hegel has, and particularly in the preface to the phenomenal, a lot of very riveting and arresting uh, yeah. pictures.